Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with z and its complex conjugate z bar. So we have z squared plus 3z bar equals 9 plus i and we're going to be solving for z. So z is a complex number, we can go ahead and replace z with a plus bi where a and b are real numbers and i is the number whose square equals negative 1. So we define i to be i squared equals negative 1. Some people say it's the square root of negative 1, but i is not the only square root of negative 1. There's another one. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it in. But what is z bar? z bar is the complex conjugate. So it's basically the number when you multiply by z and add to z, you always get a real answer. And that would be a minus bi. All right. So having said that, let's go ahead and plug these into the original equation and solve for a and b. So replace z with a plus bi and then z bar with a minus bi and then set it equal to 9 plus i. We're going to go ahead and expand this. It's going to become a squared plus 2abi plus b squared i squared, but remember i squared is always negative 1, so this is going to be minus b squared, that's something you should never forget, plus 3a plus 3bi, and that equals 9 plus i. Let's go ahead and arrange these terms, a squared plus minus b squared plus 3a, those are the real parts, plus the imaginary part is 2ab minus 3b, and that's equal to 9 plus i. Now, if you compare the real parts with real parts, you're going to notice that this equals 9 and this equals 1 because that's 1i, right? This gives us a system of equations and we can hopefully solve it, can't we? a squared minus b squared plus 3a equals 9 and 2ab minus 3b equals 1. So how do you solve such a system? a and b are both squared in the first equation. This is the first one, by the way. And this is the second one. So I'd like to start with the second equation. In the second equation, if I take out a b, I get 2a minus 3. So from here, we can isolate b and write it as 1 over 2a minus 3. So this is what I would like to substitute into the first equation. If you do that, let's rewrite the first equation. a squared minus b squared plus 3a is equal to 9. And so I'm going to put the a squared plus 3a together and write it as minus 1 over 2a minus 3, which is b squared equals 9. If you square this, you're going to get 4a squared minus 12a plus 9 equals 9. And then let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the denominator, this one. So we're going to get a squared plus 3a multiplied by 4a squared minus 12a plus 9 equals 9 times the denominator. And then of course when you expand this you're going to get 4a to the fourth power. That's going to give you a quartic equation. Let me go ahead and give you that equation and then we're going to look at the solutions. So after simplifying, this is going to give you 4a to the 4th minus, minus 63a squared plus 135a minus 82 equals 0. Okay, great. So how do you solve this quartic equation, right? Good question. You can use the quartic formula. Mm, it's going to be a little painful. This is not monic. Or you can try the rational root theorem. We, we expect nice solutions, right? Don't we? So hopefully there are some rational solutions. And they will come from the divisors of this number, 82, right? So divisors of 82 divided by divisors of 4. So it's going to be in that format from rational root theorem, meaning that we can have plus minus 1, plus minus 2, I think this is 2 times 41, so plus minus 41 and plus minus 82. And all those alternatives divided by plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4. A lot of candidates, and then you're going to plug them in and test it out. Let me tell you something. 
I've done the testing. So I found that A equals 2 is a solution. Let me show you how. 4 times 16 minus 63 times 4 plus 135 times 2 minus 82. Now this is 64 plus 270. And this is minus 252 minus 82 or 334 minus 334 and that's zero. Great. So A equals 2 is a solution of this quartic equation. But is that the only rational solution? We don't know. So you can divide this polynomial by A minus 2 by the factor theorem and find a cubic and then try to solve that cubic or still try the rational root theorem if there are any other rationals. But A equals 2 is going to give you what? Let's go ahead and take a look and we'll look at another solution. B equals 1 over 2A minus 3. B equals 1 over 2A minus 3. If A is equal to 2, then B is going to be 1. Awesome. So we got A equals 2, B equals 1, which indicates that Z is equal to 2 plus I. Because remember, Z was written as A plus BI, and A equals 2 gave us B equals 1. So this is the solution. This is one of the solutions, right? How many solutions are there? We expect four because there are, that's a quartic equation, right? But at least we found one solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other solution. And the result comes from Wolfram Alpha because that solution is a little complicated. Complicated looking. Okay. Here's the other solution for A value, very radical. And of course, if you ask me what a B is, I would say just plug it in and find out the B value. It's probably going to be something similar to this, but there are two real solutions because the other two solutions are complex. And the only nice solution for A would be 2. Therefore, the nice solution for Z would be 2 plus I. But just know that there is another Z value which is not very nice. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By the way, I forgot to say, but you can go ahead and if you want, you don't have to, but if you want, you can go ahead and test this out. Replace Z with 2 plus I and Z bar with 2 minus I and check this out. Let's go ahead and do it. Why not, right? 4 plus 4I minus 1 because I squared plus 6 minus 3I. And then from here we get 4 plus 6, 10 minus 1 is 9 plus I. And... Yes, it does satisfy the equation. Guess what? This is how I came up with the problem. So yes, of course, this is going to work, right? I, unless I made a mistake. And looks like I didn't. So yes, this is how you can come up with the problem. But the thing is, I wasn't expecting the second solution, which was this one, right? That was a surprise for me too. So it's kind of interesting that such a nice, it's not so nice value would come up as a solution as well. Well, probably because this is quadratic in Z, and that's why there are two Z values. But those values don't come easy. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.